uh, one person short, but we have a quorum. So we can get started. Do we need a big one? Yeah. Oh, just staying. What is it? Uh, Julia, it's coming forward. Okay, 7 o'clock, welcome to the March uh, meeting of the EDC. This is uh, the rescheduled March 5th meeting. It's March 12th today. Um, are there any uh, additions or deletions to the agenda? And Beth is not here, but she has a suggested addition to the agenda. Joe, do you want to mention it, or do you want to? Um, at our last um, a revitalized work group meeting Tuesday, we thought, uh, we thought it through in thinking it might be worthwhile for us as a subcommittee to petition for um, a grant of $5,000 that would be allowable under the parameters that were set up beginning of the year to purchase two more trash receptacles. Um, receptacles we have in mind were posted, I think John posted them on, on the listserv. They're $2,000 a piece. We have enough money to buy eight. We were granted enough money to buy eight. If we buy two more, we will, we will fall into a volume buy situation where we'll get 11 instead of 10. Uh, and after discussing it with Ray well, Waller. You don't have to make the case yet. We're okay. just going to add it to the agenda. That's what we're so, going to do. Right. Right. So, so, that, so the, a discussion of that potential grant will be added to the agenda. Since we're just identifying it here, we're not going to want to make a decision today because right. we need to give advance notice, but we'll discuss it today. Sure. So are there any other additions to or deletions from the agenda? There might be a deletion. Uh, is Park? Uh, oh, you're going to do Park on our page. All right, so hearing none, then um, I'm going to, I don't know if the chair is allowed to do this, I'm going to just shift the order of the agenda without changing the agenda items because we have some people waiting downstairs to take us on a tour and Mary Riley, who was supposed to be here because the Boy Scouts are meeting and it's a so tour what? A tour of the, of the theater. So oh. what I'm going to do is we're going to skip to, we'll come back to citizen comments and we'll come back to approval of the minutes. But under, as you recall, we've agreed to review, uh, to be more aggressive in reviewing grant applications after they've been completed, I mean grants after they've been completed. Uh, and later on today, we'll talk about whether or not we want to add any grants to be reviewed to the list. But one of the, one of the two grant reviews we're going to have tonight is the grant we gave to Pentangle last year to expand theater capacity, the technology, so that we could attract more uh, uh, shows because of our technical limitations we were unable to do so. So they've installed the equipment, it's downstairs, it's going to take less than 10 minutes and Macy, we didn't know what to do here, you're not going to follow us around, so we're going to sort of take a maximum 10 minute pause. You're all invited to come, it starts downstairs. We'll take 10 minutes and we'll hear what the, our grant bought us and we'll see it and then we'll come back and we'll do the park run grant and continue with item 5 and then we'll come back to citizen comments. So, okay? So good. we're just going to meet in the lobby right now, and we'll be back in 10 minutes for those of you that are online. <laughs> You don't have to go. Right? You can email. Okay, can we, um, can we come back to order? Just a quick explanation. We are short documents tonight. The reason is, is that we usually project uh, everything on the screen, and we have the agenda and all of that, but the, the projector, and I hate to admit that it's the projector, as opposed to each room is equipped, but the projector is being used by the committee that is interviewing um, for uh, Michael Brand's office. For, for Michael Brand's uh, role, <coughs> and it was in use two hours ago. So we, we ha and it, it's all set up in there, and they can use it each day when they have interviews. So we have we don't have a projector. Mm -hmm. So a, a pot we didn't, and then I forgot to tell Sally. So we don't have enough copies of things. So please share. There there are some copies of this color document that I'll hand out little bit later if you don't have a copy. Okay, we're rejiggering the agenda. We're on item five. We're going to come back to citizen comments, but while we're in post-grant reviews, 
Uh, the second review we're going to conduct today is Park Run. So. Thank you. So thank you to the EDC for granting us the $5,000 that we needed to get Park Run um, up and running. The 5000 went directly to Park Run um, headquarters um, and covered things like insurance, um, set up equipment like laptops, scanners, signage, um, flags, so that's that sort of thing. Um, so that, that was all paid um, and done. We started, our, we had our first official park run on June 1st. Since then we've had 32 events. Um, and so I, I, some of you have some papers I didn't print enough, I'm sorry, but some numbers um, to, sh to let you know. The uh, Marsh Billings Rockefeller Park Run, which is our Woodstock one, um, has had 361 people register um, through that as, as being their home park run. Um, so they, they'll get a barcode that they can then use across the world and not pay to ever run in a park run. Um, since June 1st, we've had 272 volunteer occasions and 74 people, unique people, have volunteered at a park run. We've had 32 events. This winter has been challenging for us, trying to figure out the course being a, a historical park. Um, so ice has stopped us a few times. The frigid weather ha has canceled us a few times, just because we can't have volunteers out in the cold, putting up signs um, you know, for an extended period of time and then having marshals just stand around waiting. Um, so that has canceled us a few times. Um, we've had 308 runners come to Marsh Billings Rockefeller Park Run. Um, of that, 750 runs. People have crossed the finish line. Um, number of first finishers, 43. And then that number of clubs, 29. That's 29 different park runs from around the world. So some of them are from mm -hmm. here in America. And we see a lot of people from Australia, England, UK, Ireland, South Africa. Um, so we, we've seen people from all over the world come. Uh, number of how, do they, how are they getting what, what, what you guys are doing? So, are they <laughs> so there's like a park run movement. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. I, I laugh because um, when I was in San Francisco, I did the park run there. And my husband said it's like a cult. I mean, there are people there, they just, they're, they're, this is what they do every week. They go find a park run. If it's not their home run, they travel. Yeah. So we were in San Francisco, we were there, we did park run. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And there's a, you know, a guy that comes, um, does park run with us from Hanover, and he goes to Toronto, so he, he finds the park run there. So Sally, you're in San Francisco. How do you find out where to run with me and help? Because you, you, it, there's a website. So you, you oh, know right. there are some, there are an X number of parks. There aren't that many in the States yet. But we knew there was one in San States Francisco, now. so we looked it up and we said, oh, well, we can go straight downtown. So we went. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, I don't run, I walk. <laughs> so average number of runners per week is 23.4. Before we hit the winter, we were averaging about 38, um, which is pretty good for a new park run and one that's in a rural um, destination. You know, since winter's come, it's been, it's been slower and we've had a cancel. What months did you start? June, June 1st. Um, and our biggest attendance was 60 and that was our launch day. Um, what I've also included in here is, is different ways that we have been um, in the news. So we've had articles in the Vermont Standard. Um, the, there's an excellent um, write-up on the Park Run launch that Park Run, uh, the Global Park Run wrote. Um, if you haven't seen it, really is a, a great, it really gives a good history of um, Woodstock and the, the park. Um, so that's a really good one to read. And that goes around the world. That was shared everywhere. We've been in the Valley News for volunteer spotlights. We've been written up in the forums on the Valley News from people. Um, August 8th, Vermont Standard did a 10th run celebration and celebrating our 200th registration. Um, in November, they did a um, out and about section for us because we had the girls on the run come from Heartland. So they came and they did their, their, their final run was at Park Run. So that was, that was a really fun day. And I forgot to add in there that we just had a special write-up. Um, we did a Q&A with the Woodstock blog. So that was just um, shared around. But given a couple of things are challenges, the winter, winter's been challenging for us, trying to figure out the ice situation. 
um, tried, we, we designed a new course in the winter, a two looper that doesn't go straight up and stays off of the cross country. Um, Nick from the Woodstock Inn has been really fabulous and he's helped us. They've groomed the course for us weekly um, and kept us in contact with how the conditions were. And Sally as well, <laughs> my, my conditions <laughs> person. Uh, other challenges is leadership. Right now there's just myself and another guy in the sort of main leadership roles. We had another person who, who didn't like the winter. Um, so hopefully that's something I'm going to be working a lot on is getting, getting more people into the leadership roles so it's not um, falling on myself or Dominic. And then COVID-19, um, just today, just before I arrived, I found out that park run across the world basically has been shut down at least for March. So we'll, we'll be off for March and we're waiting, we'll wait to hear and stay in tune. So I think some of the wins is the community building aspect of it. It's really, I, I've never, it's just a, a really cool group of people that come, even in the winter, there are these hardy people and we all sort of meet for coffee afterwards. We hit up Abracadabra and sometimes we've taken up the whole space down there. Um, the collaboration with the um, Billings Farm, the National Park, um, the North Chapel Strengthening Families Building Community, the Woodstock Inn, and of course the EDC. We're support, supporting local organizations. People are staying here locally. We're going to the restaurants. We're um, doing that kind of stuff. And then people share parkrun stories. They, you know, there's, there's this following, there's different you know, parkrun USA tourists or parkrun Australia tourists. And when people come, they share photos and they're like, oh, Marsh Billings. And so we're kind of known as being one of the toughest ones because it's of the hill. But then they talk about how beautiful it is. So we kind of, you know, we're up there for the beauty and for the, the, the toughness of it. So people like that. They want this challenge. They want to say they've done it. Um, the girls in the run, the volunteers, you know, to have 74 unique volunteers come within, you know, for something so new and consistently showing up is, is really awesome and we can't do it without the volunteers. And that you're seeing people of all ages, you're seeing pregnant people running, you're seeing babies in carriers, you're seeing strollers, you're seeing four year olds running across the finish line. Um, you know, elderly people, uh, walkers, people who start out in jeans and within a few months they've got their running gear and, um, and so it just, it's very, very cool to see that. And I'm, then I'm sorry, I should notice, is there a fee for people? Who no, it's there free. isn't. No, it's free. Free. <coughs> free. Mm. And uh, connections to resources. So, you know, one of my jobs is, is connecting people um, to the community and to understand what resources are available. So I've, we've managed to really do that in a number of ways. Um, people, you know, looking for um, social connections and uh, somebody was living in, um, I think it was White River Junction or West Lebanon, was looking for social connections, wanted to be closer and has since moved to town, moved um, into affordable housing in town and is super connected now. Um, so that was through a connection at Park Run. So we have a really su uh, super site. Um, Rich, I don't know if you wanted to share anything. Rich comes often to sure. give a yeah, different I mean, perspective. I, I've been doing it, it was probably, a, I don't know, like a year ago or so, I was here and I heard about it and I was like, oh, this is really cool. So I went and did it and I was surprised. You were more apt to see somebody from England than you are from Woodstock. There's a, there's a few local people that are there regularly. Liza Degnan's there, Sue Ford, uh, Mark Scully is, is, is there. But most of the people, there's, there's a young couple that got married, uh, well, they didn't get married, they got engaged mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, um, uh, through, uh, through Park Run. But it's really great. I mean, there, there are more people there from another country than there are from Woodstock. It's, okay. it's great. All right, thank you. Sorry. Oh, we have swag. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you volunteer more than 25 times, you get this free t-shirt. It has a, it's a very... It's cool. yeah. Any questions from the UDC? Oh, great job. I think this is so cool. And I, I, I have to say, um, I think I, I have, one of the things that I've thought is kind of lacking here um, in town that I missed from uh, previous places that I lived is, uh, opportunities for things to do that are ritualistic um, but not religious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like uh, I used to do a meditation group when I lived in New York and I, I miss that I, yeah. I, I miss the idea of a secular community building on the weekend ritualistic so the more I think to my eye the more things we can do that um, bring people together 
in that kind of context is fantastic. Did you say meditation or medication? Meditation. <laughs> it makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, any other questions? One more thing. Sorry. So we're just saying how you should, can sign up is uh, you can go to parkrun.com and look for Marsh Billings Rockefeller and register for free. <laughs> Wait, Geraldine, one question. Are you, are, are you staying at Marsh Billings? Is that like long term? I know there was talk about maybe the River Loop. We had talked about the River Loop um, and um, we haven't spoken about it again since I, I'm not quite sure where, we, where things stand on that. But Marsh Billings has been really yeah, wonderful and they've been fantastic to work with and right. are very accommodating to us. Okay, so thank, thank you thank very you. much for making this possible. Okay, thanks. Good job. Um, while we're on item five, which is the uh, post-grant review process, uh, at the last meeting we uh, agreed that we would ask for uh, reviews from, in addition to Pentangle and Park Run, Vermont Kitchen and the visioning team, which we will set up for future meetings. And we agreed that we would look at, consider any of the other prior to 2020 grants. All 2020 grants will be reviewed now as part of our normal process going forward. But someone suggested that we look through the list of prior grants. So in case you didn't bring your, this is the list of prior grants prior to this year. I'm going to pass these down. Could we just briefly, I'm sorry again, we don't have, there's, there's two pages. No, no, it's a two page section, so you have to share. Yeah, that's one set. Here's one more set. Yeah, if you have your own copy, okay. It, so these are the grants prior to 2020. Ignore the 2020 ones at the bottom. Are there any others besides uh, the ones we had previously reviewed, the Optimist Center, um, uh, and then we've asked for Vermont Kitchen and Visioning? Are there any others that we want to ask for a review? Because then now going forward, we'll just focus on, we'll have a 100% review process going forward from January 1, 2020. Can we maybe do this? That's a Would you like to do it offline? Well, that oh, yeah. or, that oh, okay. or uh, yeah. Well, it's just it's the just last time we agreed we would on. review it and do it here. If, if people haven't had a chance to review it, then could you, you have this in your materials. Could everyone please come back next meeting then with a checklist of what you would like to propose to review? So in, I don't think there's a rush, but I don't think we should take forever to do this. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you would each do that then. And I, there's no limit. We don't have to review any. We can review the biggest ones. We can review the ones that are problematic. I think what's important is that we've agreed to start reviewing 100% starting January 1. So in my view, we could choose to review past ones or not. The important thing is that we're reviewing them going forward. So, okay, so we'll, at, the, at the April meeting, we will expect your submissions. Okay? All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, and then lastly, um, just a very quick process update. We are in the process of reaching out to the 2020 grantees who do not yet have results, but we want to schedule them in for a meeting sometime in 2020 or early 2021 when it's convenient for them to come back to us and say, here's, we're done, we spent the money, here's what the impact was. And Joe, just from a process point of view, can you just update where sure. are we on that? Um, well, I can give you. What just really, I, how, how many have we have have already scheduled, and how many are left to schedule? I guess. Well, or, uh, or only or actually any one is so far is scheduled, and okay. the rest have said that they want to um, look at their project more closely and decide then after they have made some specific decision. Like for example. Um, the the, uh, the river run uh, they still have their money they haven't spent any money yet they have a they have hired a wetlands <laughs> consultant which they'll be meeting in two weeks they have done things that didn't require any expenditures so far like they've gotten 250 uh, okay they have um, received easements from four property owners they have spoken to the um, State Conservation Commission. Uh, they have scheduled with the DRB in April. Um, they are meeting with this wetlands consultant in two weeks on the 25th, at which time they're going to have a public meeting. So they will be able to... Uh, That's actually not a wetlands consultant. It's actually our consulting team. 
Well, as it was described to me, he's a wetland consultant. That's what Tom Marshall said. We've hired a wetland consultant. And so um, this consultant will be on hand on the 25th at the public meeting if anybody has any questions and want to go with me. So I think the target date is the 25th when we get a real concrete update okay. of what, what's going on with that. But I think what, what, what would be great if we can is to have is to sort of have a, a master schedule. Maybe it doesn't start until June or July because mm -hmm. people need time and it runs through December. Right. And we made 14 grants um, and you know it'd be great by, by June let's say to know that in July we were doing these two and in August we were doing these two and right. people don't have to know now. Right. Like, like Tom Wessler is an example. He could sign up for October. Right. I described that to everybody. I said, yeah, I don't okay, have to fine. know that now. Okay, fine. So we don't have to know at this meeting, but why don't we but just I, set as a deadline? I, uh, what I did say to him, I said, we'd like to know, as soon as you can give us okay. some uh, overview of what's going on with the money and what they're doing. Yes. Okay. Hi. Doug. Is there, are there, you mentioned you want to have uh, grantees come in and give reports. Are there metrics that are yeah. required? We have, we have four questions. Okay. Um, and we didn't for the, so this is a very new process. Understood. Right? Yeah. So we have four questions for the first two reviews that we conducted. Yep. The Optimist Center and, Sally, what was the second one? Um, we did the Optimist Center, and this is three months ago, and a second one. Um, yeah, no, uh, Rainbow. Rainbow School. <clears throat> and we asked them four questions, um, and they answered them. Today, they didn't. They actually, answered them indirectly <coughs> uh, and actually Park Run uh, both sort of answered the questions but the, but we have a form actually and we presented it we put it up and it made it a little bit more structured we just didn't have time to do that today so we will apply that going forward I mean, part of the reason for setting up the schedule so we can kind of get into that and mode. it's something that they understand they're going to be required to yeah oh yeah they say we said when we gave getting getting funds at the grant meeting we told people yeah. that we were implementing this process for 100% going forward okay so I just I want to make sure they, yeah. they're clear. Yeah, no, I'm not getting so. blindsided. That. <coughs> no, 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 I think, I, I mean, does, I think, does anyone concerned about that? I think, I think at the annual meeting, we made it pretty clear that, that they had to do that. So. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so let's just say that by, that we want to have, you know, within the next two months, we want to have the schedule completed. Sure. And tell people that, you know, they don't have to, they don't have to know their information. They just have to know when they're going to have their information. Okay. In, in effect. Is that, sure. So. All right. Um, okay. Let's now go back to citizen comments. Are there any citizen comments? So I have a question. Do we, are we allowed to talk when you're talking about like the other agenda items? Yeah, in general, I mean, there's a lot of people here, which is fantastic. Um, in general, it, it, you know, technically, no, but our practice has always been to allow it. But then I have the prerogative as the chair to sort of say, look, we have to, we have to cut things off. So, you know, we don't want to go past 9 o'clock. I think we have time for comments throughout. We're going to reserve a good chunk of time for the trash cans. There's no other major okay. issues. So if you have comments about the trash cans, you can wait on those. Okay, no so. <laughs> Jeff? Yeah, I just want to throw uh, an idea out here that was discussed at the trustees meeting on Tuesday night. Uh, a number of people have thought about this. The fact that the town uh, website for Woodstock is uh, in really bad shape. It's not up to date, it's not uh, kept up, and it's, it's kind of archaic, if you can say that about a website. I don't know if you can use that word, but it's, uh, it's something that needs work. And um, I mentioned a website, I looked at a lot of town websites, and I, I saw one for Belfast, Maine, that I was particularly impressed with. So I just want to throw that out to get on your radar. To take a look at the Belfast, Maine website, to see how intuitive it is, how responsive it is, and how it includes uh, community events there's even a, a possibility of considering why not have one website that includes both government and community and for visitors as well as uh, uh, town events um, all in one and have it just be excellent just throwing that out it's not a proposal it's just to get it on, on your radar as a thought that uh, would like to move forward the city of Belfast or the Belfast.com Belfast Maine yeah, there, there's BelfastMaine.org, and there's also CityOfBelfast.org. Well, if you click on it, the website that has both government and community events is the one. Got it. Yeah. Just check it out. Cool. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah. Other comments, Raj? Um, yeah, first of all, let me second what Jeff said, um, because I've been kvetching about our website for years. First of all, it is archaic. Um, it's built on, on ancient technology, and, it, and it's not just the website, it also, it's, it's the processes that go into, you know, not, things are not posted on the website that I would think should be posted. So I think, you know, I don't know if the EDC is responsible in any way for doing something about it, but it's certainly worth looking at. Well, I think, that, I think that what makes Jeff's comment relevant to the EDC is the part where he said maybe we should have one site. Because yeah. we're currently responsible right. for the marketing right. site, and we have nothing to do with the municipal site. I think that's well worth discussing. Yeah. I think there's, there's pros and cons to that. Yeah. Um, and but further complicated, the EDC has their own host domain name. So we, it, right, we do. And yeah. Just a, a quick explanation. We have, if you go, we have shut down the EDC pages on the town site and linked all of them to our site. The only reason we did that was it was the only way we could get functionality. It's the, it's the worst possible way to do There's it. There's no from, content management system. It's just there was no other way to, so if we have comment forms, the town site doesn't. We have posted documents, the town site doesn't. We have a calendar, the town site doesn't. And so all of the functionality we need, yeah. and, and by the way, our site is updated. If you go to our site this afternoon, you'll see materials for tonight's meeting. Right. And we couldn't keep, so there's, there's, we will shut our site down the moment that functionality is, is recreated by the municipal. Yeah, there's, there's definitely interest on both sides. To, yeah, no, to no, we, we would like nothing better than to shut our site down. So. Charles? Yeah, on that topic, uh, now that we have a new town and village manager coming in, uh, let's lay that at the new town manager's feet as to communication methods yeah. as uh, to how the information should be posted to the public. A broad issue. Okay, good. Other comments? Uh, let me just let other people go first. Yes. Um, I have a question. It's actually in addition to the agenda. Um, it's coming into spring, and our, what is the status of the flower pots? Huh. Um, mm. You want me to do that? Yeah, please. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, I, sp I spoke to John about it a couple of times, and I said, well, we've got these pots, what do we want to do with them now? And um, the response wasn't overly enthusiastic, but um, my suggestion is that we should utilize some of them. Mm -hmm. Maybe not go to the extent that we did last time. I mean, we learned a good lesson from that. Um, but there was some positive feedback from people visiting the community that they did like some of them that we had we kind of thinned it out a little bit we had too many of them out and then the reaction kind of uh, forced us to kind of review it look it over again and we eliminated some but we moved some around in different spots as a result of that there's, there seemed to be some public approval mm -hmm. from visitors and I personally I think that you know I'll, maybe I'll bring up next meeting uh, that we should kind of pursue that and continue that because it just seemed to be uh, uh, a thing that people liked. Was, now, there you know, was there a cost involved to, you know, filling the flowers? Well, you have to buy the flowers and, and you, have to buy, you have to buy the flowers, you have to buy the compost. We have the pots already. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you may have to enlist some town employees to get them distributed mm -hmm. a little bit easier than we did last year. No idea how much that might be well, well, the cost might be no but can i just say that we do not we we have we do not have a budget for no. this no we don't we we approved projects there was no proposal submitted for this mm -hmm. we own the pots mm -hmm. um if we so right now we have no money to pay for it if mm -hmm. if if the edc were going to pay for it which we could each have our own opinions of the likelihood of that. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, we would have someone would have to propose it, and then we would have to allocate funds to it. Otherwise, we just have the pots and. Where are they? Where were they? Or where are they? The oh, right now the town garage. Secret yeah. location. <laughs> but I mean, Jeff can can respond probably. Uh, being a merchant town, having a lot of people. <laughs> uh, I know they came in a cafe and had positive comments about it. Uh, there were many positive comments from visitors uh, that were far more positive than mm -hmm. locals. Um, right. And mm -hmm. uh, I think especially once they were thinned out, uh, responses became positive from all the way around when mm -hmm. there were fewer of them. Yeah. <laughs> John doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> I knew that was 
<laughs> well, he worked Touching his something. tail off. No, no, I <laughs> <laughs> done last time. Well. Yes. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Are there any other citizen comments? <laughs> Roger. Um, oh, sorry, wait. Is there anyone else? I'll give you one. Okay, last one, Roger. Are you um, are are you doing any contingency planning around around the coronavirus and because we're are we? For, Correct me if I'm wrong, we're spending last year's money this year, is that correct? The dollars go into a pot. Okay. We have enough funds in the pot <coughs> from <coughs> prior years right. to fund everything that we granted this year. So with the assumption that most of what gets earned this year would then be spent next year? Presumably. Well, the, really the way we're, yes, however you want to think of it, yes. So, so we're, we're not going to run out of money. There's a potential that that could be significantly less. If, if we um, if things turn out the way they're going to turn Correct. out. Correct. So do you have a contingency for maybe looking at projects and doing some triage if necessary? Looking at 20, at projects. At projects that have been theoretically funded this year, but maybe haven't started dispersing funds. We do not have a process set up for that. Um, I, to be honest, I, no, we do not have a okay. process set up for that. It's just a question, and you know, it's something to think about. Yeah, I, I, I think we should, let's consider if we even could have a process. I, I don't know that we could practically do that. In, in, promise the money. In effect, I mean, we have promised the money. So, but I, I think let's, let's reflect on that and, 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 uh, and then see if we add it to the agenda the ne next month. Um, I, even if it's to I think any decision we would make probably I think that's something that we have to carefully consider. No, so that's great. So let's that's add it to the agenda next month. Please consider it. I wouldn't expect it. Yeah, that's yeah, no, fine. Right let's now. add it to the agenda next month, and we'll see. By then, it may or may not be moot. Yeah, it might be great. great. I mean, it could it, be very significant. It happens. It's the slowest okay. part of the year anyway. All right. Um, if it's all right, let's move on then to uh, <laughs> progress reports from EDC projects and working groups. Let's get back to approval of minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, the approval of the minutes from February 6th. Um, are there any? Uh, are there any comments on the minutes or any corrections? We need to put February 6th instead of January 14th. Yeah. Okay, the date will be modified. Any other comments? Okay, could I have a motion to approve them? Yes. Joe, is there a second? Second. Charlie, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. Okay, progress reports from EDC uh, projects and working groups. Let's start because um, we promised to go in this order. Let's start with the litter receptacles. Um, and I don't know if Joe or Beth or Larry, who of you want to? I, I can start off, and if the other guys can kind of jump in as is as, 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 as needed. <coughs> what? I have handouts. Oh, okay, great. For us and for the folks in the well, we can share. So if you want to give some to the people in the room, I love when you talk. Trash. Say what? I love when you talk trash. <laughs> We've been talking so much trash. <laughs> Joe and I can share yeah. this. One. So um, we had a meeting um, Tuesday morning, and uh, first I think I should acknowledge Larry, and he did a great job opening up a, uh, a line of communication with Casellas, who were so very helpful and open to dialogue with us about the receptacles, what they should be, where they should be, how many they should be. Um, they were just really cooperative and, and very helpful in this whole, whole thing. So um, we should thank Larry for that because he's the guy that kind of opened up that discussion. At the last meeting, we um, arrived at a decision of which ones to use, and I think, I think there's a picture of it here. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's a couple of pictures of it. And the decision was based on some factors, uh, more than one factor. One is size. This, this would replace, one of these would replace two of the existing containers. This one is split, it's trash on one side, recycle on the other. They're 22 gallons a piece, and they would take up a smaller footprint. We could put them on a the sidewalk if we saw, saw fit. Um, they're made of aluminum. <coughs> they're powder, powder coated. Uh, they have adjustable feet on them. They're not uh, lying flat on the ground, uh, which was a problem in the past because that allowed the old receptacles to, to 
freeze right under the ground and this has an airspace underneath it and that issue would be uh, would be taken care of. Um, we were lucky enough to have Ray Royal, um, who is the collector for Casella, to attend our meeting. Now Ray has been collecting the trash in Woodstock around the green and all these other spots since who knows when. I mean, he worked for uh, Jed Dickinson when there was uh, Woodstock Recycling, and that was his job then. And then when Jed uh, sold out to Casella, they incorporated Ray, and Ray just kept that route. And he is the most knowledgeable, he's the guru of trash receptacles in, in, uh, in Woodstock. So with his help, what we learned was a, a few things. One is, in his opinion, there are more tr trash receptacles out there than is really needed, in his view. He said there were so many of them that hardly get used at all. It, it really, you don't need them. Secondly, what I learned was they pick up three times a week, but Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If they're going through town and they see one of the the, uh, the container's full, they'll stop and empty it, regardless of what day of the week it is. Well, that brings it down on Thursday. So, um, that, that was helpful enough. He also said he'd be happy to, uh, when we finally receive these receptacles, to go around and identify spots that they would be most useful based on his experience on usage. In other words, the places that he had to pick up most often uh, would be the places to identify where we should place these things, the priority of wh where we should place these things. So, you know, it was, it was extremely helpful. He looked at this thing, at this receptacle, and he said he had nothing but good things to say about it. He said, you know, it, it'll, it'll be easy to empty. Uh, there's a lid on it, so there won't be... Uh, issues about water and snow falling into it. Um, we impressed upon him the fact that we wanted black liners, and he said that would not be a problem. Um, what should we talk about the grant thing here? Uh, well, let's let, let's hold off on the uh, okay. on that until after. Until, uh, let's just get comments about the. Thing. Good. Can Good. I just say because John um, asked today, so when the first grant proposal came up. We were looking for 60 trash cans, six zero, so that there were two at each place that were identified. And so now we're looking at. No, 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 it wasn't six. It was yes, it was. In the, I went back to the grant and pulled it up. Really? Okay. Yeah. 60 for, at 48,000. Yeah. 48,000. I remember that correctly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so now we're looking to combine them in perhaps 20. This, if we could do 11 this year and perhaps another 11 for the outlying areas, Mountain Ave, places that you don't think about, Mountain Avenue, River Street. Um, um, no, Teals. No, that's on <coughs> our, the map for up front. Yeah. So. Um, well, I think, the key, I think the key point is that originally we were assuming that each location was going to require two cans right. with this solution, which which and the cost was two x whatever x was. This solution re has each location requiring one can. Mm -hmm. Obviously, exactly. the capacity is split, but it only requires one can. It has two sides on it, right. so it's a lot less space on the side. And we asked Ray if that would be a problem, uh, given that the old setup was uh, thirty gallons per can, right. and this is only going to be allowed 22 gallons per side in the same can, he said, no, it'll, it'll be fine. But as long as, yeah, sorry, but. Sorry, so, how much are the garbage cans? Let's go, is it the total bill for the garbage cans? How much is? The total bill for the garbage cans. How much is this gonna cost? Well, we have $16,000 that we can spend. And each and each can, two part can is how yeah, much? Yeah, there's oh, 2,000, 2, huh? 2,100. Yeah, 2,100 a piece. So my concern is, is I mean, I don't, I'm not going to weigh in on whether or not, you know, this garbage can is, or, you know, my concern is when are you going to spend this money? Because I'm a little bit concerned about the state of the local businesses um, in coronavirus. 
people. Like a lot of people coming back. And I feel like um, <clears throat> some of these businesses, especially the service-oriented businesses, might need some help. And as a community, we should provide that help because nobody wants to live in a community where there is no bar, there is no restaurant, there is no anything. So it just seems to me, can we put this off for a year, live with our current, current um, garbage cans, and just make sure that everybody gets through the um, coronavirus okay? I don't have an answer to that. Keep some I really don't know how to answer that. I think, we, I think it's something that we should, it's something that we should consider. I mean, I think it's, a, you know, there's... I mean, given that the money was already granted specifically for these trash cans, yes. then you have to go through the process of saying no and then setting it aside and but waiting no for could, whatever, no one, no one saw whatever, wait a minute, whatever, whatever other need might arise. So, you know, and then if the need doesn't arise or more need that we have money for, have to make a decision then. Uh, I my my sense would be better, best way to handle it is we've got this identified. Let's use it for that. And if we need money for other things, we'll just have to um, re readjust our budget priorities. I don't really see. Can, Julia, and then I was just going to comment that on this issue, if other people have comments on this, I think this is a hard issue to, to figure out. If anyone here has comments, or anyone else in the audience on this issue, feel free during this discussion to support that point or not. So, I think Susie's raising a really important point, which is that um, on a basic level, there is a human cost, like there are grants that we have granted that have a human cost, and there are grants that don't, right? And so, to my eye, um, if, if we're dealing with a national crisis, which it's looking like it's happening and that's going to impact our tourism industry it's going to impact the people who work there it's going to impact like tons of people in many ways that I can't possibly foresee right now and so I think the fact is that if there are things that do not have an, a human cost um, we are going to from a marketing perspective <laughs> come under um, some scrutiny for the choices that we make from, from a personal perspective. Well, we're not, just let me make clear. I'm not saying don't spend the money at all. I'm saying why don't you wait to see what's going to happen. It's just a couple of months. We don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, de Blasio in New York City predicted, she just announced, uh, you know, foreclosures and evictions and businesses going under, and <clears throat> we are a tourist-based economy. And there's, like, fear of traveling. So we might be looking at some... I would totally agree that there's a lot of unknowns associated with what this conversation is about. And I think your, your comments have merit. They really do. But given that there's so many unknowns... Um, yeah. I, it might. When, when you're facing an unknown, is not the time to start throwing money out the door. Unless you, the, the question is, to, to your point, is this something that we can't live without for the next six months? Mm -hmm. Do we need to spend this money right now? Or can we think about, maybe we need to think about storefront relief. Maybe we need to think about some other things. I'm not saying we, you know, personally I'm skeptical about $2,200 garbage cans. That's my personal issue. Um, <laughs> do, do, but is this the best, to, to my point before, in our contingency planning, should we look at every single thing? And to your point, this is something that doesn't have a human cost. It's, it's a nice to have, but nobody is losing their job because we don't spend money on these garbage cans. So not saying don't spend money on these garbage cans, but let's think about where in our budget <laughs> There's contingency that might be set aside for an emergent situation. And well, I think this is a perfect example of one of those things. Yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying, Raj. But, you know, the issue of the trash cans wasn't initiated by the commission. The us addressing the trash can issue was the result of a questionnaire that was presented to a public meeting and it was high, very high, on the list of what the public wanted done 
in in the village. I understand that. So that so it was not our. Let me finish. Wait, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. So it wasn't really the commit. What we are doing is trying to accommodate a desire put forward to us, like Teagle's Park, and like the benches, and the trash cans was up there with it. And so, given that the public is, you know, and we're spending public money, the, the public is the one who, who, uh, who put this before us. Why don't you do something about this, is what the question was. Right. And that's what we're pro proposing to do. I would say, sorry, Charlie, and, and I'm gonna, Charlie and then Julia, and then Susie and Beth. So on the subject of our grants relative to the issue of the coronavirus, um, we could probably relitigate re every single grant award that we made in terms of are they worthy at this time. I don't know if we want to do that, but I did want to share with you what the state is doing and what it's trying to do. So in the legislature, the uh, various committee heads have been meeting with uh, the governor's office and also with the Vermont Economic Development Authority, the Unemployment Insurance Trust Management, uh, as to find out what is possible at the state level. And they're waiting for some direction from the federal government that has not yet come. Um, so the state is trying to uh, be proactive uh, and then come up with a, a number of different legislation packages that will help businesses and consumers, and that could be uh, payment deferrals on loans, it could be a, a combination of things, it could be a temporary suspension, your experience rating if people cannot come to work, um, and so they would be eligible for unemployment insurance. So there's a whole host of things and conversations that are going on at the, at the state level in anticipation of uh, an economic impact, for sure. So, and, and it's, um, it's much larger than we can address necessarily as a village. Uh, we do have funds in the in the bank that's true but it's much larger than what we can possibly do with some of these mortgage deferrals and some of those payments so i know that we're looking at that and other places are looking at it too yep. julia so a couple of points to my um so i don't think that anyone would say that the trash cans are not um a citizen supported it, uh, improvement to the village or that they're not important like i i don't I don't think anyone's saying that or could possibly argue that. They were a considered choice. Um, they've been really well um, thought out, and I don't think that, uh, to my eye, they're not unnecessary at all. I think the, um, I, I agree with Charlie that relitigating every grant is not a great idea, but I also don't know that um, if people were to vote on what is important to the town's economic uh, perspective, like in two weeks, they would say, I want trash cans first out of all of these things. I don't know that they would make the same decision. So I don't, while, you know, while I do think that the right decision was made when it was made, I don't know that um, we're not shooting ourselves in the foot to not consider that circumstances change, number one. And number two, to that point, if one of our challenges in this town is um, being accessible for people who work, um, younger families, uh, making the town uh, affordable, I, I really don't see how um, not considering the impact that this uh, travel like moratorium mm -hmm is going to have on the local economy and the people who work in town in the tourism industry. Like we, that's, I, I think we are duty bound to at least consider it. Um, so, and I don't know what that consideration looks like. I don't know whether what process looks like. I, I just, I think that it's, we're doing the whole community a disservice to not talk All right, about Susie, it. Beth, and then Rich. So what, <clears throat> what you were saying about circumstances changing, I, I mean, I think if people were to vote on it now, you know, back in the summer nobody had any idea that there was a pandemic coming I'm not going to labor on that I just want to second that but I also want to make you know it's not just tourists and it's not just business owners who are affected if I can't go out to eat or there's not a, a, a butcher for me to go to it affects everybody here so I have an economic interest in making sure that local local businesses are around 
it may be a moot point, but in 2008, when uh, the last time we had such a recession and the housing market was collapsing, we pulled together a group of people, merchants, who said, this is the right time to do flower baskets because we want to enhance the community as opposed to letting it stagnate. You know, everybody was feeling, I, I mean, it's not a pandemic, but it was pretty awful, if you remember, 2008 for businesses and house, housing. And that's what they came up with, was a way to enhance the community as opposed to um, letting it just be. So I wasn't planning on talking about this, but since it's here, I'll say, just make two points. First, I think if you go back and you take any issue that people voted on at any one time and do it again in six months, you get a different set of results. So if that, that you could always redo that and get a different set of results. But I do think that before you do anything rash now is to see how this plays out. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I, I was thinking of as a town with a lot of second homes, with people mo mostly from highly densely populated areas mm -hmm. that may be able to work from home, you may have the reverse happen. You may have people from Boston coming up here with their laptop and working uh, from home. And now, so, so I, but th that's conjecture. So what happens? I don't know, but we don't know today. I should point out, this discussion that we're having, just looking at the list of grantees and the projects, this discussion isn't just about the trash cans. In fact, that's probably the least important of the projects. <laughs> because if, if, you were to t if you were to ask what are the things that are not human, you know, employing specific people and which we could live without for at least for two months, which is probably what it will take to know a lot more about this. Mm -hmm. um, we've got you know, 16,000 for the trash cans. We have $84,000 for Teagle's Landing. We have $45,000 for Park Run. Um, which, uh, those, I would argue that those are- I'm sorry, not Park Run, $45,000 for the R River Loop Trail. And, and, and I just point out, Park Run ceased operations until the end of the month. Uh, right, so I mean, the point is, is that we-, we those are, But those are human things, so like- those, no, like They're the all run. human. They're, 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 this is human in the sense that the flower pot, they beautify the town and people feel that that will help. So yeah. it, it, my, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, to weigh in on one side of this particular debate or the other. What I'm saying though is I think what we are debating is not is whether or not the EDC. I mean, sixteen thousand dollars isn't going to make a difference, but there are projects on the EDC's roster that could actually add up to making some difference. And so, I think what we should be debating, if whether we are or not, is whether or not we should put a pause for a couple of months onto the projects that we control or have great influence over to just say, listen, you know. We haven't spent, there's $100,000 at least uh, where of projects that are kind of big capital projects that could wait, possibly. Maybe we should wait for two months and, and see. What, what's the, so, what so, is the problem? So yeah, Doug, um, and then this, to your point, the optics of approving, you know, several $2,000 trash cans on the, di the day the Dow had the single point, the largest single point decline in history might be bad timing. That said, um, um, I, I, my question is actually relative to the trash cans. Are we have we have we have sixteen thousand dollars? They're a little north of two thousand dollars each. Well, it's really two thousand dollars for two, you get two cans in one. So right for a trash for, for okay, per, unit, per, per unit per unit per unit recycle bin trash can in one. We're we're, we're how how many you know I see on the left hand side and kind of the, the more red text or burgundy. Am I correct? Right, nine ten. or ten. 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 So how many are we, how many are we acquiring for sixteen thousand dollars? No, 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 no. That's that. Um, we're acquiring eight. Okay. Because it's three thousand or twenty one hundred dollars a piece. Okay. All right. The other uh, something that we discussed at the last meeting mm -hmm. that um, uh, considering proposing to the EDC for an additional five hundred five thousand dollar grant that would allow us to buy three more. Instead of just two more, because there's a volume. We get the third there. one free, yeah. so get we take advantage of that. So that would that would give us eleven. Right. Now, based, I don't. I'm not. I'm trying to just make the facts clear. Based on 
what uh, the gentleman from Casella says. That may be enough. May, we may not have to go after more next year because he said there was so many more than we actually needed out there currently that if we place these things uh, correctly and he'd be willing to show us where to place them, um, that might be the last of it. Right. Don't know. But folding into the EDC, I mean the uh, coronavirus issue, uh, maybe we should all take a, a pause and look at things. Yeah. So when we do buy these, um, I'm sorry. When we do acquire these, I'm not going to debate the point of whether or not we're going to buy them or not because it's an eventuality. Go ahead. Okay. In my, um, we're acquiring perhaps 11, perhaps and that's 11. the and that's these are the locations on the yes. I guess on the Berkeley side. Okay. And that was from our meeting on Tuesday with okay. Ray Wardwell. And the blue ones are relocating. No, those ones? are those are actual ones that are there also. Those are existing. Oh, They're existing, but <coughs> we're not talking about replacing them now. Do we ever want to put one in Valefield? Yeah. I sure. don't know. Put one in Valefield. I'm just curious why Valefield. You know, there's one in the middle of the Cross Street. But not well, let me let me just suggest that that that. that until we have a, f a specific map, and maybe this is the final map, in which case we could discuss placement tonight, but I think there's been a more important issue raised about yes, it. Has that been. I'd just like to get other EDC members, and then I saw a hand maybe go up here. Uh, Roger, I'll come back. But first, just go around and get your sense about the broader question of whether or not we should be pausing for a couple of months to, to, to preserve our powder or not. Sure. I think it's dangerous to go back and take away grant money that's already been granted. Uh, however, if the project is something that's so close to the EDC, then we have that, I think that's a case, a special case where we can say, yeah, it's not like, oh, Vermont Kitchen, we granted you 30,000, but you, you know what? You can't have it. Not, now you can't have it. That's not good, good business, good practice. But I think for the projects that are close to the EDC, yeah, I think if we can, we should hold off. Okay. Absolutely. Larry, do you have a question? Yeah, second? just exactly what I was gonna say. Can I say something? Yeah, sure. And then Roger. Um, I would agree with that. Uh, I, th I think a, a pause would be prudent. I mean, we don't know if we're going to be allowed to have a meeting next month. Right. So, um, well, we do have a contingency for that, which I'll talk about. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> the only way that I would really agree to, you know, a pause is if we agree that when we are able to pick it up again, that we keep things intact. Yeah to where we are now, and not between now and then, we make all kinds of changes and revisions and all sorts of other things. It seems, Charlie, do you want to add anything to what you said before? <clears throat> no, I'm good with the pause. Okay. All right, are there any other comments on this broader issue about the pause? Because if it's the case, then the specific discussion about is this trash can the right yeah. trash can um, uh, is, 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 is delayed. Oh, man. oh, sorry, Roger. You want to? No, talk? no, that's fine. I, I, okay. I, I support what you so, said. So, I, I think what we, I think. Beth has something. Oh, sorry, I guess Beth. I have a question. I would. I, I have no problem with pausing. Um, we've spent two years on trash cans. Yeah. A few more months doesn't matter. <laughs> but I would like to talk about. I mean, I'd like to know that if, if. Everybody's just gone crazy, and <coughs> the pandemic is not going to affect us as we thought it might. And we can, in June, order trash cans. I'd like to know that we can order these trash cans and be done with it. Yeah. So we don't have to have another that, meeting. That was my point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna, let's not revise anything <coughs> or change well, the scope of what we want to do. Well, let's just put it on pause. The assumption is, is that nothing's going to happen. But if they do have to spend that money, then there yeah. might not be money for right. the trash cans. That's, that's fine. You're talking about that. the selection of trash cans. Yes, I'm right. selecting the, so the, so June 1st, if the world is all happy again, then we can. Okay, so can I just ask, just by a show of hands, without saying what your point of view is, how many people have strong points of view about the look and feel of the trash can? David does. Okay, so about 40%. Okay. How many people are, uh, have negative views of this specific trash can? Oh. Okay. So, I'm trying to figure out on this issue of selection of trash cans. We've got two issues on the table here. I'd like to deal with the virus one first, but 
whether or not we've given the community enough time to, to assess these trash cans. We have had a lot of expert input on things that I think none of, most of us wouldn't have thought of, like how close is the bottom to the ice and, you know. So I think we got exactly the right expertise. I also promised, and now I can live up to it, to share the people who shared their comment forms online at our functional website, which can't be done on the town. <laughs> and I promised that I would pass on their comments. Carol Pickett said the trash cans are ugly. David Nix has said the trash cans look great. And Antonia Ritchie is worried about their durability and capacity. That's so, it. Well, you should, should look up where uh, the remaining factory is made in China. Uh, no, they're not made in China. They're made in uh, Pennsylvania, and they have some up in Truckee, California, that Truckee. has more winter, more snow yeah. and cold than Woodstock does. Right. Not cold. So her snow. comment was, which I don't know. No, the last was. comment about the uh, durability, right? Durability. And so her comment was the name of the town. She that looked up the town. And was that Carlsbad. Was no right. right. But so, we, we weren't so naming towns, we named it trash. Reporting on their comments. Okay. <laughs> so given this reaction, there are. Did any, uh, sorry, the EDC included. Does anyone on the EDC have negative reactions to this? So I think we have 22, 23 community members. You're talking about this one, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Right, the one Not that we posted. Yeah. So I think that it's fair to say that people are comfortable in general. If you wanted to, when we announced this, people are comfortable, they could have come to the meeting. It's not the end of the world. This, you know, so, yeah. so, let's, so let's agree right. that we've agreed on what the trash can is. So we don't have to have And any I'd like to vote. have a motion. Mary has, Mary has a comment. Is, is, is 21 or $200, is that kind of the going rate for a trash can? Yes. Some are more. It is. Yeah. There are that, more. I mean, it strikes me as like a $500 Navy no. toilet seat. No, right. the, the, okay. the ones we have are twices. The, the, the ones that, are, that Hanover has, and we have a few of, right, are about $1,500 each. The biggest deal we have to get into one of the pharmacies is $1,000. $2,000. That's $4,000. That's $4,000. Okay. And Ray, yeah. <laughs> Joe mentioned a couple months, and earlier someone, I think maybe Roger, said postpone it six months. Right. Well, if you were to postpone it six months, you'd be in the fall, and I just have a feeling that if it came September and you were talking about ordering trash cans, it would thereafter be postponed till next spring, right. which, you know, we would have gone a whole year without them. And I think that the two-month period to reassess where we are in the health area at that point. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to make a motion to that effect then. And, and to go back to your point, Michael, about projects that are close to the EDC, which is, I'll make that more specific and see if, if by consensus we're comfortable with this motion, then we can vote on it. What is the motion? Now I'm going to propose that we, pr we put a two-month pause on spending for the trash receptacles, Teagle's Landing, and the river walk. And in the case of the Teagles Landing and the River Walk, we immediately contact the teams, which have some people here, and basically say, listen, can, don't please hold off on any money. We, we will pay any bills that have been incurred, but please hold off on spending any on committing any additional funds for the next two months. You can proceed with other planning that doesn't cost money, like like the, the events that the river Well, walk. I, I can speak to two of them. One yeah. of them is Teagle Landing, the only bill is going to be outstanding is the survey. Right, and that's all that, that work And that'll be done at the end of this month. As far as... Um, that work is already underway. And it's, already and it's almost, almost completed. Right. Okay. And, the, and as far as um, the river walk, Tom told me they haven't spent anything right. yet. So they're planning on spending uh, or hiring the consultant on uh, the 25th that might require a, a deposit well, or well, some no, kind well, of I can call Tom and say, listen, yes. let's hold off on that for a little bit. I would move what okay. you said. Okay. So that incorporates the two months. And we're going to ask them, to, we'll, we'll commit to anything that has already been committed to, but yeah. we'll ask them to hold off on committing to new expenditures. I'm just trying to identify what okay, we have a motion and But not activities. Not activities, just committing to spending for two yeah. months from today. So we have a motion and... I'll second it. And Oh, so Charlie moved it, and you've seconded it. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? I think you're allowed to do that after. Yeah. No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Sorry. Any opposed? Okay. 
Thank Motion you, Susie. That's a great that you brought that up. Thank you, Susie. Yeah, I think it's a really important issue, and I, I don't know how I, at least, was thinking, well, the, the virus is that's going on out there, but we don't have to worry about it. I, I think we're all good to that yeah. to a certain extent. Beth? Can I ask a really difficult question? I don't look like a bad guy. Is it about flower pots? No. Ah! <laughs> it's about $50,000 for the school. Yeah. Since yes. The, the headlines today were not so good in the paper. Has the $50,000 already been spent for the school or whatever? And couldn't that also be postponed? Well, I, 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 okay, we've passed, we've made it past a motion. I know. Um, I'm we not. We could now have, uh, you know, uh, um, well, well I, does I, anyone I, have an appetite for that discussion? I mean, I. Um, I, well, if you'd like, I can call Ben Ford and ask them where they are with it, and if they haven't spent the money, explain to them what we decided and see how it feels about it. Well, it wasn't part of the motion. I understand that. Yeah, I just, right. That's the other big chunk of money, yeah. if I remember all of that. That's the, correct. It is correct. The, yeah. Yeah. Things well, the market, marketing is, is the biggest oh, chunk, big chunk but it. I think the, the, but I explicitly didn't put that in the motion because of your point about the flower pots. In effect, this is the time to market. You know, it may be the most important time to market. I mean, you can argue that, but that's why I didn't include it in the motion. Um, I'm gonna just suggest from a process point of view that we, if you, if you know Ben well, that's great. Let's find out from the school committee what le leverage and leeway they have. I'm personally yeah, leery that. about that slowing that down if, if they're it, yeah, 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 it really yeah. throws a wrench into things. Yeah. Right. But, but if no, they have some right. flexibility, then, then I think it would be prudent. I can find that out tomorrow. Is, is everyone okay with taking that informal approach to it first and then yeah. learning more? Yeah. Okay. All right, great. Thank you for raising this. I think it was a very valuable contribution. I think it's an excellent idea. Right. Other updates from uh, EEDC projects, the marketing and housing. Marketing, do you want to? Briefly I have actually stepped away from marketing, okay. so oh. I am not the person to be reporting. <laughs> okay, and Courtney um, is in the Bahamas. Correct. Then, or Bermuda. Uh, the next meeting is scheduled. Oh, he's home. Oh, he's just scheduled home. for um, next week, I believe it is. Yeah, to check my calendar. Okay. So they have not had their quarterly meeting, which right. they will be discussing. Is it next the Wednesday? Twenty second or something. Oh, okay. Wednesday. Sorry. Wednesday. Oh, you got you. It's Wednesday. Okay. We can talk about the campaign results if you want. <laughs> you know, I haven't. Ch you and I need to coordinate. Sorry, Susie. Do you have anything to report? Because you're actually on the committee, also. So, um, okay. So we'll wait for the next meeting to report on that. I'd rather hold off on that because you and I need to coordinate what we say about that. Mm -hmm. So, and I need. We need to tell the marketing committee first before we. Mm -hmm. Not in this form. So, okay. Uh, and then housing, Charlie. So um, I'm. As you recall, we did establish a housing working group that would review the results of the housing study that was uh, done by Douglas Kennedy and Associates um, and delivered to us in December of 2018. And we haven't made any um, decisions or actions on it uh, until this point. And the committee is charged with reviewing the recommendations and then to recommending to the EDC. Uh, for recommending to the select board uh, specific actions to be taken regarding housing. Um, and so I, I think my email invitations have been subject to a spam filters uh, for a couple of the members, um, so I have to revisit that. So we did have, uh, I met with two people who had expressed interest and one person had uh, already opted out after saying you, you had our uh, bias, but uh, another person is uh, was looking for five people a total f to serve in this group, uh, looking for somebody from the real estate, uh, uh, somebody, a, a realtor, an attorney, a builder, and then a couple community members that may not have that aspect. And so uh, we do have someone who has a legal background, um, and so, uh, we have two community members who have expressed interest, and two of them are here. Um, and we have a realtor who has agreed to serve on it. Um, I have not yet been able to confirm her availability as to when she's going to be back in town. But one of the first things we want to do is uh, have a conversation with uh, the author of the study, Doug Kennedy, to ask some questions uh, that are very relevant as to what was in, uh, specifically intended because the people had some questions immediately about, okay, well, it said that, but what does that really mean? So in order to set up a meeting with the group uh, and after reviewing the whole study, reviewing the recommendations, to sit down and meet with the, with the author. And so I hope to have that done. Uh, I was ex 
speaking with Jennifer tonight about uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, I hope that to be in the next month, but it depends on that other person's availability who is out of town right now. But and again, just as a reminder, the objective is that by the end of 2020, we're expecting the housing working group, we're hoping, I should say, uh, that the housing working group will come up with proposals for th that may require significant capital uh, in order to expand housing supply in Woodstock. So, and, and if they can't, obviously, they're not forced to spend money, but th that's the purpose of it. So that starting in 2021, and maybe for multi-year commitments, we can start to really allocate large dollars, which we have not allocated. We've allocated $7,000 to the Thompson Senior Center to expand a home share, home share, which will create about a five or six uh, units, which is a pretty good payback on $7,000. Um, uh, but other than that, we've only funded the housing study. We've done very little else on housing. So, and, that, and housing, we think, is a major leverage point in economic development. So that's the objective of the work. Okay, any, thank you, Charlie. Uh, any, and then uh, the supporting local business environment is the last working group, and uh, we, we have nothing yet to report. The group is, uh, we're hoping to form that group very shortly, and a couple of you have volunteered. Thank you for that, and uh, we'll get that going shortly. And John, I've actually had a couple of comments from um, local business owners about different issues. Oh, fantastic. And I'm just wondering, do we have a process in place then to sort of start collecting that yes. kind of information? They give them to you and you collect them. Yes, fantastic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, as, as soon as, thank you for doing that. And let's just promote the fact that if you have issues like that, if you could bring them to Sally, yeah. or, Sally would be the best. That's great. Right. Okay. As soon as I bring that group together, our first step will be to come to you and to collect that. That would be great. Thank you. I didn't realize that was happening, but that's yes. excellent. Well, it's constant. Okay. All right. Um, Item number seven, financial and metrics update. Okay, um, we're gonna now do this quarterly, and uh, th there are two things that I wanna report. The first is on a financial basis, and this relates back to a piece of Doug's question earlier, or no, uh, Ro Rogers. someone's question about, Rogers, no. the Roger about are we spending last year's money or this year's money? We have now sorted out the grants and the accounting, and we believe that we, Will end, we, we will have about $350,000 in reserve, taking into account that we would earn in 2020 a little bit more than we earned in 2019, uh, which was our forecast as of the date of the annual meeting. Um, and that number is about, we would earn about 300, and we earned about 290,000 in 2019, calendar 19, we're now operating on a calendar basis. In calendar 2020, we forecast about 310,000. We have a little bit of money that we've recovered back from prior grants that didn't spend it, which we get the money back. And taking all that into account and the fact that we uh, made about 370,000 of grants and given what we had in the bank, we figure we'll end this year, if all that happens, we'll end this year with about $350,000 in reserve for future projects, big projects, hopefully like housing or things of that sort. Two things have happened since then. One, obviously, the economy, the economic shock, but also the fourth qu quarter revenue, which the data for which we got immediately after the annual planning meeting, uh, showed a very slow growth in the fourth quarter. Uh, for the first quarter in 12 or 16 quarters, um, given the way the whole process works, I think it's fair to say that it's not clear that that's a trend, but it's also something we need to watch carefully. So I think that there's some change, that, well, I think there's a high likelihood that we will not hit our revenue target for 2020, which means we'll end 2020 with less than $350,000 in the bank. Now, how much less is hard to tell. So I don't think we're in a crisis point. I think, you know, you build up surpluses for things that you intend to do and for things that you never envisioned you intended to do. And so we're fortunate that we built up the surplus that's the situation as it now stands. So any questions about our current condition? And really the only thing we'll have to do to monitor our financial condition is just look at our quarterly revenue at this point. We've granted, we've made the grants. I mean, there may be some small grants that we want to consider, but fundamentally we'll just now track our revenue quarter by quarter and, okay? Yeah. The second thing I want to talk about are, uh, are metrics, broader metrics. and. When the EDC, uh, so I have a couple more copies. And for those of you who have this little color thing, we all have them. And I've got three more copies if you want. We don't have enough for everybody, but if you want to share. 
Uh, when the EDC first came to the select board in 2016, they not only proposed, uh, we, I should say, I wasn't around, but Char look, Charlie, who was on the EDC in 2016? And Joe. You and Joe? And, and maybe some people from. Yeah. They, uh, we proposed uh, not just a set of priorities, which we broadly maintained, but they also proposed a set of metrics that we should use to measure progress. And uh, some of those metrics, not all of them, but some of them, m most of them are on this first page. I divided them into two categories, all called outcomes, actual economic development. Options tax going up. That's a proxy, very good proxy for business, you know, revenue of those types of businesses. Population going up. The student population at West uh, Woodstock Elementary going up. And I, I added property values, so I think that's something that we need to keep focused on. And then what I'll call drivers, things that in and of themselves aren't economic, but hopefully drive economic activity. How many people come to the Welcome Center? How many website visitors do we have? How many social media followers do we have? That's a question. Yeah. The, uh, the, the elementary school population, is that uh, inclusive of Poffa School clothing? No, you'll see that the data breaks okay, that out. I agree. Right. I agree. So, mm -hmm. the suggestion, so this is not precisely what the EDC proposed in 2016. One important measure that we propose that we don't have here is the occupancy rate at the end, which, uh, Charlie, I checked, and Joe, I checked with Courtney, and that's not information that they release. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that, you know, we could ask, you know, the, the Blue Horse Inn and some others to, you know, we could collect some data and get, but frankly, the options tax is a pretty good proxy for that and related things. So I think we've got some pretty good metrics here of different types. and. We can actually collect data, and I think this is not something we're going to track month to month. It's probably something we're going to track year to year. And so this is sort of a, a prototype EDC dashboard. And if you look at, and sort of green check means it's going up, yellow question mark means it's flat, and a red X means it's going down. And if, if you look at these, and this, by the way, is all pre, this is December 31st, right? I mean, this is not what's going on, the biggest stuff, you know, what's going on today. But as of December 31st, uh, on the second page, you can see we've had really solid growth in the options tax. It's got a green check. The Woodstock economic, uh, elementary population is going up. These are preliminary numbers. Um, I, I, I don't know how many of you know David Miles. David has an unbelievable memory for numbers. These are the numbers from David's memory, so they're not official. But he's very accurate with things. So we're going to finalize this. But it looks like the number of students separate from the number of students that have been brought in because Pomfret closed and Reading closed, grades five and six, et cetera, are going up from 155 to 180. That, that's really important because that's the best, that's the only 10 year future indicator that we have in these metrics. Right? The population, and I don't, I, these are, um, this is Charlie from housingdata.org. I think this is the census forecasts. And I don't know how accurate they are. American Community Survey, so they update it on a fairly regular oh. basis. But okay, yeah. so actually, American Community Survey is yeah. to some extent more accurate. Yeah. Than oh, census, census. yeah, because it's sample data. Oh, but I didn't realize they updated. I thought they just did forecasting. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then it's down a little bit, and you know, 30 households is or 30 people is important. Property values, interestingly, are going up. This is from Zillow, and then the growth drivers are really quite positive. Welcome center visitors are up from 2016 by 30%, 25%, up to 48,000 in 2019. Um, website visitors, unique website visitors, and I just picked that. You may want to, or, or you may want to tell us to use it. We can't use too many metrics, but you guys, if you have a better one, that's fine. Um, social media, you know, are up 50%, 100% basically over two years. Uh, social media followers doubled in the last year. So, um, so uh, I just wanted to, I, I guess, get permission to publish this unless, if there are additional metrics that we want to gather, I don't have a long discussion about it given that it's late, but if there are additional metrics, we can sort of, you know, fold those in. Um, but I thought it would be a good idea to sort of publish this, maybe just in a big, like on a, on a poster and put it up in town hall and then update it every year. Um, any, any comments or suggestions, Charlie? 
I, I would only one comment. When we looked at the different metrics that were available to us before and the ones that we decided on when yep. we were doing this uh, so many years ago, uh, it, one of the criteria was that it had to be publicly inf uh, pub publicly readily information. Yeah. Readily public, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Readily, yeah. Sorry, can't we, talk to We could get uh, it. And we could get it, and uh, it was immediately available. So um, I'm not sure if this meets that test, but one thing that we should look at is just the uh, per capita income uh, of residents in Woodstock. So what is, and that shows what the change is in really economic development, if you think about it. Yeah. Is it, are you better off? I would also um, make an unpopular point, sorry. Um, I don't know that population is actually an accurate measure in this town, given the d different demographics of this town versus the nation. Um, the national average for 65 and over is 16 or 17 percent, and in this town it's 36 percent. So I don't know that population um, is really going to accurately reflect growth, or like, it, it will reflect net numbers, but um, not necessarily um, uh, ages, in, 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 income um, generation, or like how those how those people are behaving right. relative to a national norm. Well, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I, I, the only thing I, I don't mean to respond to every comment, but just on that one, the um, without commenting on whether it's right or whether it is something we should act on or not. If we, if we didn't measure it, we would have to, I think, have an obligation to pretty much change our mission, which is quite explicit about trying to grow the population without saying anything more about which segment of the population. So I, I, I would suggest that if that's what you're suggesting, then we have that. No, no, I'm just, I, I just yeah. don't know that it, it's, it's reflecting, like, I don't know that we're going to, like, you don't know that where it's going to grow. It's, it's, I don't know that it's ever going to be in the green. Well, for right now, or for like the next period of time. Like, right. But taken know. together, I mean, if you look at population, then you look at the number of kids in school. The yeah, two yeah, are yeah. going to tell you a story, right? Sure. Yes. Yeah. I I just think that it requires um, like knowledge of the demographics to to unpack to interpret to interpret it. Right. Well, I think so this maybe, is I mean, like including some more information. So that people could interpret correctly the data, mm -hmm. or I, I don't oh, okay. know. Oh, okay. I think I think that the Charlie's point is that yeah. you know, looking at the school, you're going to find out uh, who's coming in and who isn't, and where the growth is and where it isn't. Uh, you know, like well, when we moved in town, there were 360 Woodstock kids at the elementary school. Yep. So you know that tells you. Tells you the kind of town it was then, and looking at, I think, a, a critical metric would be that student population. Yeah. In my opinion. Well, you're not. You're you're just questioning the overall populations. All right. And well, Todd, can I just make so, yeah. whenever you do something like this, make sure you put your data source. The source. Yeah. No, I have. Yeah. I, I right. should have put it on here. Right. This needs to be labeled draft for discussion and all that. This is. <coughs> we'll, we'll include all that, and we'll finalize the numbers for the. the the, the uh, elementary school, which are, as I said, just from Dave's head, which is a pretty good head. But, uh, uh, and I just noticed that some of your metrics don't, th that some of your assumptions about what drives economic development aren't being measured. So like, how, it seems like one of the assumptions is that housing, affordable housing, is a driver right. of economic development. So there isn't a metric that matches all of the assumptions <coughs> you're making about what drives development. Uh. So you could look at income relative to the, there's a the American Community Survey can show you like 30 you know are people in town spending more than 30 percent of their income on housing, which is an indicator that there isn't enough affordable housing. Right. Yeah. Actually, one of the metrics that I, uh, were, was recommended was the percentage of people who are full-time residents, mm -hmm. which is an indirect measure. Uh, of that, and actually, in some ways, a bit, and even well, it, it avoids the word affordable, which has different connotations. I think what, what, at least I've tried to say, is that what drives economic development is the availability of, of entry level housing, yes. uh, which is affordable because it's entry level. But 
but that, but, but it's, a, it's an economic point, not a, not a societal point. <laughs> but in any event, you're right. I think there is no housing. And I, it, it's not included here um, because I couldn't, I, I couldn't um, find the data on it. Actually, the, actually, the data I found out was very contradictory. So I think we should try to include something about housing, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the one you suggested or something else. That's a really good addition. So, Roger. So I think, I think this is a really great project to take on. Um, I think a lot of this discussion is kind of like, how do we drill down on yeah. these gross things? Right. Like, like the unique website visitors and number of social media followers are very gross numbers. In right. some ways, they're not particularly meaningful because they're not drilling down. Right. Just as total population, there's no, way, th there's no reason you couldn't drill down using American Community Survey data and look at population growth in different age bands, um, you know, which is not, that's not something that necessarily could be put on a poster. Right. But <clears throat> I think the EDC would be above and beyond its mission of kind of dispersing funds. <clears throat> that would be a tremendous value to this town in terms of helping the town do economic planning yeah. or any kind of planning to have a, essentially a set of consistent data that would be, you know, here's your gross numbers, but here's how you drill down. And it's like, how, so how many 20 year olds are there this year right. in town? Um, and, you know, like where are visitors going on the website and what's, where are visitors coming from on the website? Uh, you know, all of that stuff that tells you, that gives you a lot more density and, and kind of nuance for planning. So I think that would be a great project. Yeah. I know it's, you know, you're a bunch of volunteers, so it's, Easy for me to say. But. Okay. Are there any other any comments from EDC members about <coughs> anything you've heard or that I've said of this? But I'm going to take. Uh, sorry. Nope. Okay. All right, I'm going to take from this that um, that there's a phase one and a phase two. We're pretty close to phase one, something like this that would fit on a poster. But there's also a clear phase two to do the kind of things that you all suggested, and I I think. I, I'm happy to, you know, I'm happy to take that on. I may be happy help. to work on something. Yeah, no, I think I, it, I might have some extra to do too. Good, and I think that, it, you know, that's, so maybe we can work throughout the year to kind of, by the end of the year, to have some kind of, you know, I think there's a real value in, in some very simple measures. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Um, so, okay. Um, by the way, sorry, there's one other um, metric that I, I, can I just put this in front of you? Got to, I think there's a measure that's not on here. That's the first measure that people in Woodstock use to measure the entire state of the economy. And that's the number of empty storefronts in the village area. Right. Which, as this data I think shows, is not a good metric to use, but people do use it. So I'd actually like to add that in um, to this. Particularly <laughs> because uh, I think for people now, that we believe that there's a lease signed for Whipple Tree. There is a lease signed for Zayas. There is a lease signed for Morgan Blue. There's a lease signed for the train station. Wasp is reopening. So the only empty storefronts out of the 79 which exist, which is Ad an Junith. amazing number. Ad Junith. What is it? Ad Junith. Is, is that? Vermont Flannel. It's the from old Vermont Flannel. And the two places in between the pizza place and Hops and Barley, yeah, there. In between the, the rec place. center and there, there are 79 places you can walk into and buy something or get a service. And there's only three That's of them amazing. that are now going to be empty as of the summer. Now, of course, then others could disappear. Yep. So, but I think that that's an important metric. Does anyone that disagree with that? That's great. Way, way better than the national average. It's not just the small towns that are going through that. New right, York right, City right, has right. that too, so that's huge. But do we agree that that's something that we, we should include? Or uh, absolutely. I, I was. I'm sorry. Did you say something, John? No, I'm. He's no, I was just saying face. that we. I'm sorry. My face does things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying something. I was just saying that we considered it before, and um, a better metric that's immediately available without somebody counting as to what's going on and knowing who's moving in, who's moving out, is something we don't have on that. Is that's measuring sales tax revenue as well. Yeah. But that's only on items that are subject to a sales tax. So it's not that excluded. So clothing is not taxed. Thank goodness. But so that's. Um, <laughs> That's not something that's going to show that. So it could be something, but it's not. You're going to have to go around and say, how many do we have today? Yeah. Joe? 
Well, I, I, I think I think it's a good thing to look at. I mean, it, it, it often happens that people will come into the cafe and say things like, you know, we're hoping when we visit we'll be able to do some shopping while we're here, and there really isn't much shopping going on because we've got a lot of places that are closed. I personally uh, was thinking about this summer and getting excited about it because it seemed to me that, you know, Woodstock is starting to pop a little bit. And, a lot of the stores that had been empty for a long while, uh, with brown paper on the windows, that it will not be the case this summer, and that I was really getting excited about yeah. the idea of Woodstock really coming alive. But, and which would take a couple of years, because they'll come this year, see how it looks, and, and then decide to come back the next year if they tell some friends. So, uh, we'll see what happens. Now, I don't know what this corona thing is, how that's going to impact tourist trade. Nobody does yet. Okay. But I think, I, should say, yeah, I think it's a good metric to use. Yeah, okay. All right, anything else? Thanks for doing that. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, last couple of items. The storefront incentive program at our last meeting, we had a, um, a discussion about principals and Charlie. Fortunately, we have a legislator amongst us, and Charlie converted that discussion into a really, lot. what I would describe as beautiful prose. <laughs> During the meeting. During the meeting. <laughs> it was yeah, pull it brought a body, tear to my Complete sentences. Good spelling. <laughs> it's really first class work. Some complete. It's a really low bar you're setting. <laughs> <laughs> right. It doesn't have any flower pots in it, so that's good. Um, is, are there any comments about the uh, about the, the proposal? I think it is it's faithful to the discussion. So That's, I was only saying. trying to yeah. reflect. Have a discussion that we have. Do you have anything else you want to add, Charlie? Or? Uh, I don't know if people have had a chance to look at. A couple at. of copies. Yeah. Um, so, and for the folks at home that might see this, so the, the storefront incentive grant program we established some time ago what was it two years ago, Julie. I can't remember when that was. Yeah, about. Um, yeah. And the idea was to provide an incentive to a new tenant of a, uh, of a space that had been vacant for six months or more, and to provide uh, at least one month's rent up to a fixed amount uh, for that space for the first six months, and if they were survived the next six months, then to give them another, uh, another month's rent. So it's basically two months' worth of rent for the first 12 months. And uh, we had struggled with defining as to who would be eligible for that space and where the storefronts were. So I could just read through this as, as people are reading it. Uh, the purpose would be to sustain a thriving retail center in the village of Woodstock comprised of independently owned retail stores and restaurants. And the definitions of a storefront, what does a storefront really mean? And we had conversations about that. It means uh, a room or set of rooms facing the street on the ground floor of a commercial building typically used as a retail store. Um, I had to go to Wikipedia for some of that stuff. And retail store, a business enterprise whose primary source of revenue comes from selling goods or services directly to final consumers for personal non-business use. Um, and then central business distri district is the cluster of commercial buildings in the center of the village of Woodstock. And I described in, along the streets as to where that extended. And the one that I did get a comment back was on Central Street. Uh, from the intersection with Pleasant Street on the northern side of Central Street and extending west to the intersections with Elm Street, North Park Street, and South Park Street. So it's very interesting to figure that out. Um, but I think it was the one is how far, the question was raised how far down Route 4 along Pleasant Street do we extend this district? I believe that's Larry, you might have raised that question. Um, and then the grant, uh, route, route 4 Commercial Quarter, that's the place. The area of the village and extending into the town that begins at the intersection of Central and Pleasant Streets, yes, of the dummy, and extends east to 512 East Woodstock Road, which is the current location of Woodstock Beverage. And that was, I just threw that out there so we could talk about as to whether or not that should be the area of which we're trying to fill empty storefronts. Okay. So then the grant type criteria, the town should provide grants for the described below to retail stores who establish new enterprises in the central business district or in the Route 4 commercial corridor, provided they meet the following criteria. A, the storefront has been vacant or unoccupied for 180 days or more. B, the retail store is not operating the same business within the Route 4 corridor or the central business district. 
The retail store maintains, C, the retail store maintains business hours that are at least equal to similar retail stores in the central business district or Route 4 corridor. D, at least 70% of the storefront space is dedicated to retail operations, defined above. E, the retail store does not own or operate more than 10 stores in other locations. And F, the retail store is entered into a lease for the storefront with the property owner for a minimum of 365 days. So that was the criteria we're trying to determine. Does an office qualify? This tries to identify that. As long as there's 70% retail space, then it would qualify. I think the major changes to the current policy, just to highlight that, is east to Woodstock Beverage, and 70% of the storefront space is dedicated to retail operations. Mm -hmm. By that second criteria, we would not have granted the award to Sea Shepherd. They've already been granted. Well, and the also the retail operation hours, the operation hours. They're never open. That's what I'm saying. So we would not have. Right. Uh, fine. Yeah. What about a restaurant? Yeah, right. Sorry? What about a restaurant? Oh, yeah. As long as they're operating, if, if they're so only open retail? from. Yes. Yep. It is. Okay. So the service, if they're open from 2 p.m. to 2.15 p.m., they wouldn't qualify. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, Comments? I have one, one question on this, Charlie. So it's about independent businesses. I love that point, but you said no more than, I mean, if they have more than 10 other locations, they don't qualify. I remember when um, the Sunoco, there was a group out of Rutland. It was called Donuts of Rutland, and they wanted to put a Dunkin' Donuts there. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they owned more than 10, but it's a Dunkin' Donuts. So as in terms of a franchise, I feel like we need to put some wording in there. Yeah to make sure that it's not just a local franchise owner that owns maybe eight Dunkin' Donuts. And they can say, well, I don't own 12 or 20. Good so point. You, it's a good point. I put 10 in there and That's what we had. personally, I don't have a problem with the Dunkin' Donuts as long as it meets our zoning criteria. But I understand where you're going. Yeah, I mean, I, I think like, I have a problem with Dunkin' Donuts in Woodstock, but that's me. So I, I feel like I would like to see and language in there limiting those types of businesses in the town. Plus, uh, yeah, not so much limiting as not insisting. Yeah, exactly. It's not our job to. Uh, right. Well, ha, ha, I mean, I think let's get this done now. So I mean, ha, yeah. ha, how who, does any? How would you change that? Jo Joe agrees with you, Charlie. Well, I, was, uh, uh, I mean, you, you can extrapolate that a little bit. I mean. Um, my understanding was that the pharmacy, there was an opportunity for Gary to sell it to a Walgreens or a CVS or something like that. Right. And if that had happened, there's more than 10 of them yeah. everywhere. But that, but that doesn't mean he can't sense. sell it. It just means that we wouldn't give CVS $1,800 for rent. I see. Yeah, I mean, this, that, we're not responsible for saying you know. Jeff? How about putting words in uh, about not incentivizing national franchises? Well, I think there was language to that effect in the first grade. Uh, mm -hmm. Does it, did it say that? No. Well, this, it was, it, this was the language we had. Well, why don't no we do more than 10 pretty, stores. Pretty, pretty. Well, so I think simple. we said like no national chains. Um, in, in, in one of the first drafts of the storefront, I can find it. We, we said something like that. Yeah, right, totally. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. Well, we, we, so yeah. I'll make I'll make a motion to add language to point three D. At least seventy percent of the storefront space is de uh, sorry three E. The retail store is not owner operate more than ten stores in other locations, comma, or is part of a national chain. Yeah. What do you okay. do with real estate <coughs> businesses that are? Yeah. Oh, it did say that. Would you say Larry? What's the question? Real estate. There's a bunch of real estate businesses. It's not retail. retail space. Oh, not covered. They're selling homes. So oh, it's not a service. Store. So Century actually, 21. Retail would not be. Uh, well, it says service too. Our is it? Permission was revenue from the our goods um, or services. Wait, it's it, it said um, prospective tenant is not operating the same business within the metered district and is not a national chain defined as more than 10 stores. As defined what? As more than 10 stores. Oh. So that's how we defined it last time. So I don't. So that got changed slightly in this version. Because the owner is the owner thing. The owner or operator. Correct. Well, franchises operate. are owned by, so the national chain, right? More than ten, we equated. We can put it to. Right. So, so Previous. as it currently is drafted, we've changed. We've eliminated that restriction. I right. think Michael is suggesting, and 
uh, so you, that you, we add that restriction back in. So your com it would be comma or as part of a national chain. Right, if you wanted to add it into 3E, or you could add it into the yeah. other one too, but yeah. 3E. Charlie, in your mind, a real estate office, is that a service? So as defined, a retail store, a business enterprise whose primary source of revenue comes from selling goods or services directly to final consumers for personal non-business use. That's a service, isn't yeah. it? Your estate is not a service? Yeah. I'm asking. Yeah. Yes, well, my, well, I would hate to be the judge. Okay, so this is, <laughs> this is part of the issue is that these are, this was written so that um, they didn't have to go before the board or any committee, that these would be just, if somebody met the criteria, they would get the grant. So I think, I'm the one well, I think that pops back to what John's point earlier was, they just wouldn't get the grant. Yes, no, no, but, no, but my point, point, the point is that I am supposed to be the one who makes that decision. Right. And none of them that have come forth so far have exactly fallen into it. So they've all had, so I've had to, I've had to go back to the right. chair or to somebody else and say, well, does this, does this really fit the criteria? And there were some decisions. So it, it hasn't been so cut and dry to this point. I would argue With anybody? With anybody. Julia? I would, um, so when, when we, came up with the storefront initiative, um, there were more empty storefronts there was. Um, in town, right? And so like, when we there had this eight. conversation, we, we were debating like, what if a law firm wanted to open up? Or like, what if a real estate firm? And we kind of, Sally, Charlie, if I'm speaking accurately, in my memory, I think we came to the conclusion that an occupied storefront was better than a papered over storefront. We'll take what we can get. We don't want to exclude anyone right now. I would argue that the current circumstances are different than then, and I think we can be a little bit pickier and exclude things like a real estate office or a law firm or something that's not customer facing in a tangible um, way. But that would just be my instinct. And well, let, let me ask a question, because I think Sally's raising a, a particular process point, which might be a point number five. I won't, pr I won't move it. but. Are we ba are, should we say, for point number five, that <clears throat> occup potential occupants of retail space who do not fit these criteria can apply to the full commission? Or do we want to decide not to, to do that? I mean, it, that's pretty good. <coughs> it should be your decision. Sorry? I think it should be the board's decision to decide if somebody does not um, fit the criteria as Part a board. Part of the idea, though, at least at first, yeah. had been yeah. that it would be a streamlined, that it would not require, because as you can see, we talk and debate things. Right. And so the idea was that it wouldn't take up a half hour of very limited time, and that by defining the terms up front, we wouldn't have a conversation about it. But otherwise, you have one person that's making the decision. But she says, as a practical matter, has brought oh, almost every decision okay. to, to okay. all of them. Yeah, have, have been come to okay. And some of them are obvious. I mean, like, like if the, you know, if the wasp, well, or if the, if, I mean, the Whipple Tree it is a store. I mean, it's selling yeah, athletic that's equipment. That's you know, that, that would be the most straightforward one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But anyway, in any event, the process is she is bringing them forward. So. I get, all right, so wh where, do we, where do we come out on this? I think there's no new information, so let's try to get it decided tonight. Um, well, first of all, are we comfortable with the, with, with the with any, is there anything in the text that we should take out? Okay. We've had two potential suggestions to add. One is Michael's suggestion about the, about the uh, chains. Is anyone opposed to that? Or Charlie, you might be opposed to it. Oh, no. Okay, is anyone opposed to that? All right, so let's add the language to 3E. Done. Okay. Uh, do we want to leave this as the policy, or do we want to explicitly state that if there's something that, uh, that is different from this, do we want to give ourselves permission to grant something different than this? How would you do I that? It's opening up a can of worms. Okay. Yeah, yeah. how would you do that? No, okay, no, no, that's fine. Okay, so, so so then we just have a so sorry Charlie. Go ahead. Then we so the last two things on there, which, which exactly. gives us an opportunity to review it if we need to, it says because within 30 days of determining the retail store meets the qualifying criteria, the town shall dis disperse funds. 
So it's okay. within 30 days of determining. And, and as a practical matter, the administrator is when she doesn't has a question, she's bringing it forward to us. So that's fine. Okay. So then we do have to approve this because this is slightly different. So can I have a motion? Well, let you. But then did the, the other issue too? Yeah, um, professionals, including or excluding professional services. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. So Where what? Do, what do people think? What's our view of that? I thought the, in, the intent was that those products or services that are being sold or provided would be sold or provided on site. That's right. So the question becomes, is the product at a real estate office being sold on site? Is the product on site? You would have to say, no. no. It's not, you're not selling that particular space. Uh, that's a rough interpretation, but I'm just throwing that so out. So can you just add on site into 2B? Or take out service. We don't take out service, a massage. Or a, a, a haircut. We put Brenda out of business. Here. So I, 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 you add in goods or services on site? On site. Okay. They're transacting on site, though. They're just not. No, no. The property's no, not. That's on a site. service. Yeah, because the stockbroker is selling <laughs> stuff, but the stocks aren't on site. Well, we want to incent our thing for what Charlie's saying, I think. so. Uh, are you I'm just getting, no, I am just getting the wording correct. Okay. Yeah, the difficult part. But, uh, Charlie, can you? What was I going to do? Let's put on site it. I think that's where the services or products or services are delivered on site. That's as close as, I mean, you know, we're not going to, it's not going to go to the Supreme Court. <laughs> tiny houses, maybe. <laughs> really tiny. Okay. okay. Wait, there was still a discussion because Larry had brought up the Route 4 corridor. corridor. Larry? You mentioned the Route 4 corridor as defined. Should it be shorter or should it be what? It goes all the way to Woodstock Beverage, which includes then the building where, where the kitchen is and all of the, I mean, I'm just saying that there's, there's a lot of things that are not sort of central commercial in there now. You're attributing that to me and it wasn't me. It wasn't you? I, I'm the one, I did bring it up, so maybe I was okay. the other one. Okay, I'm okay with it going there. I think it, it, it's, there's sidewalks. It's yeah. part of the yeah. Well, right. there are sidewalks to the town. There are sidewalks toward, toward the kitchen. Not all the way past. Yeah, not past the, the ugly building with the pizza ring. Yeah. No, it's, it's postmodern. Yeah, I, I think it's. I, I'm very happy with that. Yeah, but I am too. So, yeah. unless anybody's strong, you're happy with that. Okay. So I think it's. So I'll make a motion to approve the new, the, the slightly modified storefront incentive grant program as printed here, subject to two modifications, right? One is point 0.3e, which would add, uh, do you want to just read, what did you? Point 0.3e is the retail store does not own or operate more than 10 stores in other locations or is part of a national chain. Yes. And and the other change is point what, 2a? Uh, 2, 2b. 2b, a business enterprise's primary source of revenue comes from selling goods or services directly to final consumers for personal non-business use. I'm still not sure if directly could me even mean on site, but um, to, uh, why do you say directly on site? Directly just, on site. That's good, beautiful. It's <laughs> I mean, on yeah. site. It's 905. So <laughs> I love it. And there goes your quote to five. Burn them down. Yeah, right. That's right. Charlie's going to say it wasn't hit. These weren't his words. I don't know. Okay. I was forced. So I move that proposal. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, I, I'm going to suggest, just given the time, that um, that we postpone the remaining um, the remaining items until the next meeting. Um, uh, the, the, we, the visioning meeting, we have instructions from the last meeting to set up a, the meeting once the new town manager is on board. So that hasn't happened for another week or ten days. So, uh, and the others, I just propose that we uh, deal with at the next meeting. Sounds good. Is there any other business that we need to conduct? Thanks. Okay. Thank you all for coming, by the way. Oh, sorry, I, I do have one last thing for the record. Um, th this is, um, wait, hold, don't leave what, uh, Susie and Roger, I just want you to hear this. You have to stay. Pay attention. Yeah, you can't just leave. Just wait for one minute. Okay. You can't leave yet. Um, th just, I just want you to hear this for one minute. So, um, th this, uh, this is Charlie's last official meeting of as an EDC commissioner. Um, I'm not prepared to um, honor him 
because he was supposed this meeting was supposed to take place last week and he was not going to be here right. so we didn't make any preparations and then I forgot that now I didn't actually know that you were coming tonight <laughs> ah, I ah, so uh, because Charlie hasn't just served on the EDC he helped form the EDC and has served on it for many years and so forth so at, le at a minimum we need to have some kind of you know applause. <laughs> We're going to find a way without going to too much. I got an idea. You know that coffee you put on the tab at the cafe? <laughs> yeah. Forget about it. I paid for it. It's probably a month ago. <laughs> but anyway. The standards are going to fall drastically. Right, exactly. <laughs> anyway, I just at least wanted to note it, and we'll find some small way to kind of recognize you know, his contributions in the future. We weren't quite prepared to do it tonight. So, OK. Are there any, any other business? John, you know, if it wasn't for Charlie, the Economic Development Commission might have fallen by the wayside about 2008 or 9. And then after it was finally formed, it kind of fell away again. And he, his determination and resolve to make this happen is why there is an EDC today. Well, and in fact, I want that to be recognized quite formally and in a, in a more well-prepared form. But thank you for adding that. That's exactly the reason why I want to well, make sure we do that. So hey, if there's no other business, can I have a? I, I, Rich has been here um, from the Chamber of Commerce just so that we can just remember that we need to have that discussion about marketing um, in the near yeah. future. Correct? Yep. Absolutely. Okay. And I yep. promised back this afternoon that I would get on it. It's in my bottleneck. No worries. Thank you for, for remind, the physical reminder. I did want to bring up one more thing. Just yeah. today, um, both Jeff Kahn and Robbie Blish were in the State House testifying before the Senate Transportation Committee as. There's a movement to remove the requirement for permits for long trucks to go through Woodstock. That's great. What does that mean? That means it goes to study. It won't make you happy. Huh? It won't make you happy. It won't make you happy. Currently, there's a requirement for any trucks over a certain length that they have to get a permit to go from Hartford all the way to uh, West West Bridgewater at the intersection of Route 100 and Route 4, and that has then a discouragement, even though the permits are free and no permits are denied, a discouragement for truckers to come through Woodstock. And Woodstock has always been of the opinion that fewer trucks is better, yes. uh, both for safety concern and also to, uh, for the pedestrians in town. So is it that? So it is, it is undecided at this point, but it's likely that the Senate will vote to remove that re requirement. Yes. So we'll see how that transpires, but uh, the, the village and the chief, uh, Beth submitted a letter in support of maintaining that requirement. Uh, just to let you know that is being discussed in the halls of the legislature. They were not feeling very positive. They were not, no, and they shouldn't have based on the conversation from the senators. So. What that's, that's terrible. Yeah, what, what, is there any, are there, is there any uh, action that could be taken? The trucking lobby is pretty hard. Huh? The trucking yeah. lobby is very good. Uh, it, it, if it passes the Senate, then it'll go to the House, and then they will have another opportunity to argue the case in the House. So I'll keep folks apprised of that. But it is, it's a very real possibility that that'll get removed. Woodstock, that section of Route 4 is the only section in the state that requires this permit. So we stick out like a sore thumb. Does, does, um, does the Hartford Chamber or, or the, I mean, because that affects the Queechy Gorge pretty significantly also. It would. Yeah, I suppose it would. I don't think conversation would be had with them. Uh, the folks in Rutland have been really dedicated to removing this requirement I know. I know. for years. And uh, so anyway, I'm not sure what the fate of it is, but I thought the Economic Development Commission should know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that report. Mm. That's, okay. That's ridiculous. Did we have a motion to adjourn? No. Oh. No. 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 no, we have did not. No, can we have a motion? Yes, yes. I move. move. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you. Um,